Hello everyone, so today we'll be doing the rear suspension on my BMW E34 540i. If you haven't already, go and check out my video about the front suspension, um, there's a separate video for that. And today I'll be doing a video showing how to do the rear. Let's have a look at the new parts. We've got two new Bilstein shocks and IVAC lowered springs. We're also going to be replacing our shock top mount. And that's pretty much the result to the it. The tools you'll need to remove and replace your rear suspension are as follows. First up, you'll need a car jack and some axle stands in order to lift and support your car. You'll also need a tire iron to get your wheels off. Next, for removing the interior of the car, you're going to need a flathead screwdriver, a Phillips or a Starhead screwdriver, you're going to need a 10 mil socket, a 13 mil socket, ratchet, and an extension bar. Uh, for removing the strut from the car, you'll only need a 22 mil socket. You'll also need a breaker bar to get that off. For undoing the spring off of the strut, all you need are a pair of spring compressors, a adjustable wrench, and a 17 mil spanner, that's all you need. And for putting everything back together, if you want to, you can use a torque wrench to make sure everything's torqued. And then that's all you need to replace your rear suspension. All right, so one of the first steps you have to do when trying to remove your rear suspension is to remove your rear seats. These seats lift straight up, there's two clips, one up this side here and one down that side there. If you yank them up, they should pop and then the whole bottom of the seat can slide out of the car. There we go. There we go. So both clips are popped and now the whole seat should be able to slide out like so. The next thing we have to do is remove the seat back. There's two screws down the bottom here. These are M10. Okay. Okay, so the next two screws aren't here. That's for your seat belt. There's two plastic ones that are here, right next to the seat belt. There are 10 mil as well. Be very gentle, it's a plastic. There you go. Not much to it. Okay, so the next thing to do is <clears throat> grab your headrest, pull it up, which I've already done, and then grab this plastic sleeve and pull that up. <clears throat> In here and here, there's two plastic screws and you have to turn, turn them 90 degrees and that will disengage them and then you can pull the headrest out. Okay, so you just yank it straight up and it comes out. Okay, and that's the second one out. Okay, so there's two clips for the seat belts, two covers, and they clip just out. They feel like they're going to break, but they pop out. They're well made. Okay, so hopefully now the whole thing comes out as a piece. We'll see. There we go. I think that'll give me enough room to get to my strut tops here. Um, now that that's out. Also, you can see these clips. These are the clips that make it a little bit hard to pull off the seat, but you can do it. Okay, so the next step is to remove this parcel shelf um, at the back of the car. There's a few of these rubber plugs, and you can grab them and pull them out. There we go, that's one. Keep 
there's these plugs as well, which go all the way along. There is your top mount. So there's a bolt, three bolts, three nuts, sorry, that hold each of these in. And we'll have to get them off. I'm thinking I might have to take the speaker out temporarily to do so. So I'm gonna do that now too. Okay. Once you have your speaker out, there are three screws that hold this plastic container on and we'll get that out. And then finally, we can take the damn nuts off. Okay, so with the speaker out, this should lift up. And there we go. Now we have plenty of room to get in there and get at each strut top. I just made a really quick run up to the local Super Cheap Auto and got some new speakers that fit the speaker wells for my car. Seeing as they're already buggered and I've got them out, I might as well change them. Let's get back to changing my suspension. The next step is to jack up the rear of your car and take off your rear wheels. Okay, now that you have your wheels off and your car jacked up, the only thing you need to remove down here is this 22 mil nut, bolt, sorry, 22 mil bolt. Um, I think it's 22, I'll check it. But you have to undo this and take it out. So let's go ahead and do that now. It's not very tight. There you go. And now your shock absorber is off at the bottom. Now. My rear shock absorbers are actually pretty easy to get off. The other slide slid off with a bit of hand pressure. So if yours is rusted and stuck in place and you can't whack it off and you're having trouble prying it off with a crowbar, a good method to use is a gear puller. You put this around the back of the, of where the um, shock attaches to the, what, the, the knuckle. So the claws go here, you put the end here on a, on a socket or something you've put in the hole and then you tighten it up and it will pull your shock off. Hopefully I won't have to use it, that way I can return this and get my money back. Okay, so we're in the car, and now we can take apart the, the rear shock top mounts. There's three 13 millimeter, I think, nuts, which you have to remove, and it's just like the front suspension. Very easy to do. I'll uh, go ahead and do that with you guys on camera. The whole thing should come out now. There we go. 
go. Easy as that. And that's one side out. Time to do the other. With the rear shock out, it's time to compress it and pull it apart. We need some spring compressors. You're going to need some spanners. I think you'll definitely need one of these, just a multi wrench. And you're going to need a socket set. To use spring compressors, you want to try and get as much of the spring in the teeth of the compressors as you can. And you want to try and put this bit uh, in a spot where you can easily access it, so it's on the road. I like to put it down the bottom. You really want to make sure that these hooks are really onto the spring because if this slips off, it can be dangerous. With both your spring compressors on, it's time to get your ratchet and start tightening them down. Keep an eye on it all the time, make sure nothing's slipping off. So, never put your face here because if that lets go, that's a surefire way to knock yourself out or kill yourself. Now to get this off, you're going to need a spanner, 17mm spanner, and you're going to need your multi-tool. Now on the top of this shock, there's two flats which you can grab. You can grab them like this. Okay, and then you can put this on, counter hold, and turn. That'll be a bit stiff. There we go. So it tricks to stop the shaft from spinning, um, especially if you want to reuse your shock. We are not care. We don't care about that. So if I break this shock, I don't get the shock. There we go. That comes straight off. Now I recommend lying everything out in the way that it came off. So when you put it back on, Nothing gets confused. There we go. So there's a rubber boot in here. There's a ledge that lines up with the top of the spring, just like the front. Make sure you put that all the same way that you took it off. Some sort of a cap just to spread the load. Whoa. Oh, look at this. Dried grease everywhere. The thing's been leaking. It's been probably leaking for years. This is your bump stock. Yep, this is absolutely full of oil. That goes there. This whole cover, look at this. Look how greasy that is. And the way to tell if a shock absorber is not working properly, if you push this down, it should go back out. See how that's just staying where it is? This shock absorber is completely buggered. This is a nice new shock, it's very shiny. Yes, I am going to read the instructions. Because I'm cool like that. This is our top mount. We're replacing this as well. Spring. New top mount. Let's have a quick compare to make sure they do fit. Put it to the picture. The first thing that goes on is this. There we go. Second thing that goes on is this thing. Whoa. Now the pitch is telling me that I have to hammer on this. And it is a bit tight, so I'm gonna go ahead and find something to do that. I 
I think that's on. Alright, once you've hammered that on, um, put your weird new washer thing on. That wasn't on the last design. I'm going to put these on. I'm going to go degrease these and I'll come back. Okay. Put your bump stock in your cover. Slide it on. Oh, wait. This goes on first. There we go. Next up is the steel cap. Then your spring. And we want to put the spring with the tighter coils up the top end. Now we're going to have to compress this in order to get everything back on again. Okay, now that I've straightened out my top mount, I put it back on the spring and I've made sure everything's lined up properly. To do this, you need to make sure that one of your threaded bolts lines up with the flat of this, the end of your shock, the side that doesn't have the um, extension bit coming out of it. So once that's lined up, take your top plate, I'm not even sure what it's called, but I'm going to call it that. Chuck him on top. And then installation is the same as when we took it off. So thread it on and hold the shaft of your shock while you turn the nut on with your spinner. You Final step is to slowly release your spring and your shock. It's finished. Voila! One brand new shock. Completely fixed. I'm not going to record the other one, but it's exactly the same as this one. Alright, now both of these springs have been put back together on the shocks. And it's time to insert it back in the car. This is really simple, just lift it up into the car and do it for nuts. Okay, time to tighten them down. This will be the same as the front, do 22 Nm, so just a little bit firm. A bit more. Okay, I'll talk to them later. Look, look at that, it lines straight up. Pull it onto the knuckle. So that clicks right in place, get your bolt, and this one has to go to 127 newton meters. Yeah, that's taught using my foot. There we go. In. Your bolt. There's <sighs> never enough work. And that's it. That's how to put the suspension back in anyway. Now it's just a matter of putting the interior back together and I'll put my new speakers in and that's it. How nice does that look?
All right, so the suspension's been installed now and the car's been lowered back down. I've cleaned up my hands, so it's time to put the new speakers in and then reinst <coughs> reinstall the interior. And this is the car after the rear suspension's been replaced. The height difference isn't too much and I was expecting that because my rear suspension was pretty saggy. But now it feels a lot firmer and it handles really well. That, in conjunction with the front suspension being done, means the car pretty much feels brand new. It's really good, and I really recommend doing it to your E34 if you get the chance. It's a good upgrade. It also looks pretty good. So yeah, thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful, and good luck changing the suspension on your E34.